my name is Brianna Briscoe. I have to say that the killing of Freddie Gray was not right. I mean, they like they it, although he had a pocket knife, they shouldn't have killed him. That wasn't right. And he used to do things for us and people in my classroom. Like if the ice cream truck came around, he used to buy us ice cream. He used to take us out to eat. Like I miss him so much. He was like a brother, and he always used to play with my sister. And wh- wh- why why do you think that that the the police are acting like this? Because. Like, they don't like us, and we do too much crime, so they just trying to, like, gun us. They gunning innocent people down for no apparent reason. All I have to say is black lives matter, and it, do, it does matter, and I think it's going to change if they give take Freddie to justice. I miss Freddie, and even though he's in heaven, I hope he is as much as I love you so much. No peace! No peace! No peace! Our is so wide, family. That when you look around, you see really the vastness and diversity of this city. Right. And we yes, all here together. Yes. We may not agree on everything, but guess what? You don't have to agree on everything to work together on something. Yeah, yeah. And here's the something we agree with. Police brutality oh, in Baltimore must stop today. Yeah. We agree. Now you, say, now you, you might call God by different names. You may not pray at all. You may be from the east side or west side, up the hill or down the hill, but we agree today, no matter your age, no matter where you're from, we agree in this moment that we need to, as a community, police the police because they cannot police themselves. You all live around here, correct? We live on Mount Street, yep. About a mile the other direction, South Mount Street at Fever House, Baltimore Catholic Worker. So what do you think about these demonstrations? Well, we've been here several times, and um, it has to be. There's no way to get change without getting out in the street. We know of uh, two people murdered right around us by the police, uh, that nothing uh, changed after that. And as far as treatment of people, well, like under O'Malley, there were 100,000 arrests in one year, and that was unconscionable. Well, I think O'Malley was in many ways the architect for the type of policing that we've seen here in Baltimore. Zero tolerance, a high rate of stop and frisk, you know, so it really sort of created an environment where you had 127 murders or police killings between 1992 and 2012. A lot of that is in the period in which he's in office and so, or even in the period when he's, in which he's governor as well. And so a lot of this has taken place under his watch and only now today are people really finding out about it, but it was going on the whole time. The former governor, future presidential candidate, has a large, large responsibility to bear in terms of explaining the type of police state that we have here in Baltimore. For uh, Freddie, they don't even have a charge. Uh, And they'll make up the charge. That's what's going to happen. And this will probably end that they just didn't follow procedure. And that's why he he died. At the soup kitchen Wednesday and Thursday, people were talking about this, of course, all the time, and a lot of people had their own stories about what happens in the police wagon. They had been beaten up at Mount Street uh, Police Station also, so it's, it's not an isolated event. People are afraid of the police, more afraid of the police than the drug dealers, that's for sure. You know, in front of that police station, you think everybody would be embarrassed in the city just to see the conditions that people live under right around here. Uh, You can go from North Avenue down Mount Street all the way to Carroll Park and find only about 40% is is inhabited. The type of segregation, redlining, racial zoning, America's history, you know, you look at this public housing development here, Gilmore Homes, you know, public housing in Baltimore was originally segregated. You had black public housing, white public housing, and the disinvestment by the city government, by the housing authority in a community like this. So that when police are coming in from the suburbs, you have the ABLE Foundation saying that 71% of Baltimore police don't live in the city. Over 9% don't live in the state. So when they're coming into a community like this and they're looking at it, they think just because the conditions of the community are bad that the people here don't deserve respect. You know, they look at a TV show like The Wire and they think that that's representative and emblematic of the type of people here. So if you're coming from the suburbs and you come into a a community that looks exactly like the public housing that you saw in the wire, then you're you're more than likely, I think many times, to bring the biases with you that people here aren't worthy of being treated correctly. And I think that's a big part of it. People aren't looking at how 
society here has forgotten about this community. You know, basically treated this community like it doesn't exist. And so, but the police, when they're here, they know that America's hardly going to be looking, and they they can get a lot away with a lot of stuff. But that's changing right now. We heard that the FOP president said that we were a lynch mob. They took a 25-year-old man by the name of Mr. Gray, and they severed his spine at the base of his neck by 80%. That was a lynch mob act. It was a lynch mob act when they beat Tyrone West. That was a lynch mob act. When they threw Anthony Anderson on his head and killed him, that was a lynch mob act. A year ago, in May, not quite a year yet, they took a young man by the name of George King and they he held him down on a hospital gurney over east at Good Samaritan Hospital and tased him to death. We didn't just come out here for Freddie Gray, but it's because that Freddie brought us here. We stand united for him and we demand justice for Freddie, but we demand justice for George and we demand justice for Tyrone, and we demand justice for Anthony Anderson. We don't have to go to St. Louis. We don't have to go to New York. We can start right here in Baltimore City and demand justice for all of our people. And we don't care whether you black, or whether you're white, or whether you're gay, or whether you're Jew, or whether you're Catholic, whether you're male or female. We are one city, one community, and we stand right here, right now, on the corner of this street, in front of this police department, and we tell them right now that we're demanding justice for Freddie Gray. The whole damn system is what, what do you think about the protest that's happening today? Oh, I think it's good to protest, but you just want justice. You know, you want it real. You know, they need to go to jail. They killed him. He didn't deserve that. I'll, I'll greet for his family. I just lost my daughter at 1502. Mount Court over there in the far in 2014. So I want justice. Stop the killing each other. This is my granddaughter, this her friend. You know, it could have been them. It could have, it's anybody. So yeah, these police need to stop. Say it, say it, say it.